It's time to really look into your retirement. Your retirement. How sound are your finances or your business finances? Business finances. How do you start with wealth building? Wealth building. If these are questions you have unanswered, then welcome to Business Builders with Robert Tanner Jr. Well, welcome back. And I know I got you thinking about retirement, and it's what I want you thinking about because there's just some statistics out there that are scaring me to death, and I hope they would scare you as well uh, because they're nothing nice. Um, here's another one that I want to just give you. Uh, statistic number nine, Stanford University, um, California. Three biggest pension funds uh, say they're going to be $500 billion short in meeting the future retirement obligation. $500 billion with a B short of, of meeting that need. Uh, another place they looked at a, a study of all 50 states and all 50 states are facing 5.17 trillion dollars in pension obligations however they only have 1.94 trillion set aside in state pension funds which is a difference of about what 3.2 trillion dollars across the 50 states so even if you have a pension plan there is no guarantee that you're going to receive a pension in your retirement uh, according to the Congressional Budget Office and Social Security Office, they said that the Social Security system will will pay out more benefits than it receives in payroll taxes. So all new companies that are taking off payroll taxes to give you a future benefit, they're telling you that right now they're paying out more money than you're paying in. Well, any system, if you're in business, any system that does that for any length of time is going to break. It's going to collapse because you can't pay out more than you take in and do it in a continual way and still be able to meet your needs. Now, I know some of you all believe, well, all they got to do is go in there and start printing some more money. The problem is every time they print a greater supply of money, the value of money goes down. It's, it's that law of supply and demand. So now the dollar that may be worth 70 cents, if you keep printing, printing and printing and printing, you end up with a dollar worth 30 cents. And so it's not that you're going to have any more money or the effect of any more money. You're just going to have more paper in your hand. And so it's important that you understand you have to plan. And I just told you that 36 percent of you all don't put anything in a retirement plan or don't have a retirement plan. Now, you may say it may be your boss's fault because your boss don't offer a retirement plan or you don't have a retirement plan at your office. or There is no pension at your office. You don't have 401k and all that. But let me just tell you this. At the end of the day, your boss gives you the one thing he needs to give you to plan your future. It's called a paycheck. Now, when you get your paycheck, whether they took something out of it or didn't take something out of it, it is your job to prepare for your future. It is your job not to spend every dime that comes in your hand. It's your job to make sure you're setting something aside. Now, I told you a couple weeks ago that every time you get a paycheck, some part of that paycheck needs to be put aside for your future. Now, using any number you think works for you, a number you can have some discipline about, but there should be a number that's committed to getting that done, and you should really work on getting that done because just it's going to be a reality real soon for you. Also, you should know that back in 19, well, back in 1950, there were 16 workers for every one person in retirement. Right now, there's 3.3 workers for every person in retirement. And in just 11 years, it's going to be two workers for every one person retired. So that means for you to be in retirement, two people got to pay for it, basically. Where it used to be 15 people paid for it, the burden wasn't so much. This is why I'm telling you the raising of taxes in this country is inevitable. It's going to have to happen because there's just no way to fund this. It, it's out of control and there's no, there's no relief in sight to get it done. And so why it's so important to you is to understand that out of the whole government budget, if you think about the deficit we're in, everything else is going on. If you look at the whole budget, it is predicted that with the gap that we have right now, that 92 cents out of every dollar would have to go into Social Security and Medicare. It would have to be absorbed by that. So how would you fund an army? How would you fund a country? How would you fund any other program if you would need 92 cents out of every dollar just to fund this baby booming, out of control, Social Security and Medicare costs that would have to be paid in? And so if, you, if it's for every two workers, guess how much money would have to come out of those workers' checks to support the one person in retirement? 
And so you have to begin to think and I mean, use your brain well and understand. I told you at the beginning of the show how what your life expectancy is. So if you're 51 years old, that's about another 28 years. You have and you got about 14 years before you find yourself in retirement. So you got to ask yourself, what am I going to do? And what can I begin to do to prepare for my retirement? And then once I do retire, I got to deal with another 20 plus years of being in retirement. And you got to think about that because it is huge. Now, AARP did their baby boomer study, and they said that 40% of the, of the baby boomers they talked to, that's 40 out of 100, said, I've already concluded I must work till I die. They've concluded they will not be retiring. And as long as the boss don't throw them out of the company, they're going to work. They literally plan to die working. And it's sad, but it's just a new reality. Some of them tried retiring, and you know who they are. They try retiring. You go to Walmart, and you see them handing you a basket. And you go to different other places because they're 70 years old. They're 75 years old. They thought they'd retire. They thought they'd be able to go out and enjoy fishing every day. And they learned that they did not have enough money. They learned how much medicine costs when they had nobody to pay for it. They learned that when the insurance companies weren't paying for it, because you, when you left your company, you also left your health care. And when you left your health care, you found out that what you thought was $100 for you for health care, you didn't realize your boss was paying 1400 of it. And then when you leave, you now find out for you to have health care, it's $1,500 a month. You can't afford it. So then you get to learn what the real cost of health care is. You get to learn what medicine really costs. It's not the deductible on that, on that card. It is the real cost of medicine. So a medicine you were paying $10 copay for, you now are paying $105 for. Or you're now paying $200 for it and so forth because, you know, you, it was being subsidized and now it's not. And when your income is limited and your costs are going up, especially in the area of health care, you begin to find out retirement dollars aren't what you think they're going to be. And so unless you plan, unless you do something significant in your planning, unless you begin to get your head around this thing, you're going to find out why it is that so many people who thought they would work end up going on the drop for three years and then trying to then go back to the company as a contractor or whatever they can do because they're in their 60s, high 60s and 70s and understanding if I don't work, I don't eat. And they're figuring it out or their children are having to kind of supplement or whatever's going on. And since the children can't afford to supplement, they try to put them in whatever place they can put them in that they can afford. And, and if, if all else fails, get them so poor that they qualify for Medicaid. And if you've ever been to a Medicaid home, all I have to say about that is go visit one. And if you go visit one, you will understand why it is the last result. But yet you'll see many people in it people all up and down the hallway and everything else because they did not calculate this properly and their family was not prepared to deal with it. And so this retirement thing is is huge. It's a big issue and you have got to get your head around it. You've got to make sure that your mind is right behind it. Now, if you'd like to give us a call about this, you can get on your phone now, dial in 504-341-8255 and I'd love to talk to you about it. And after this break, we're going to be talking about some solutions, some things you can begin to do to get your re retirement on track. Integrity Financial Business and Corporate Services, an independent and business consulting firm under the leadership of CEO Robert Tanner Jr. We specialize in advanced business planning, maximizing tax reduction, redirecting strategies, and much, much more. It's time to let the professionals at Integrity Financial Business and Corporate Services lead you in the right direction. Visit us online at integrityfbc.com, email us at info at integrityfbc.com, or call to make an appointment at 985-224-1136. Well, welcome back, and here we go. I told you the time for some solutions, and we just gave you one right before the break, and that one was to use a long-term care policy. We followed that by you need to get yourself a good Medicare supplement. The cheapest way to fund these expenses that are going to come up in your 60s is with different policies. In fact, insurance is one of the cheapest ways to pay for many things that go on in our lives. So these are ones you can use during your lifetime. You probably will use during your lifetime. So get those things done. You can contact our office to get it done. Our phone number is 504 799 
2210 in New Orleans area. If you're calling us and you're out of state, it's okay. Um, your cell phones don't hit you up for long distance. Give us a call and we'll be glad to help you. We do serve all 50 states, however. You can also give us a call in our River Region office. That's 985-224-1129. And of course, I'd love you to call into the show. And I tell you what, whoever would call into the show or one of my first calls to call into the show, I'm going to walk you through how to fix your particular retirement plan if you're so willing to call in and share it with us. Now, I'm going to move on further here to talk about some other things you want to consider doing and some things you may want to stop doing. I want you to begin to think now. I want you to begin to say, what could I do? to move my expenses down. Let's get the steps together. First thing you have to do if you're going to contribute to your future is you got to get your present expense down. So what could you do to begin to bring your present expense down to about 60% of your total income? So what could you do if your total income was $1,000? What could you do to make sure your expense did not go over 600? Or if your total income was let's say five thousand dollars in a month what could you do to get your expenses down to about three thousand i want you to think about that think about what could you do because if you could get your expenses down to about three thousand then you could put a thousand away a month towards your retirement you could even go as high as two thousand depending on what kind of discipline you had now, if you could begin to build something like that, it wouldn't take very long at all for you to really begin to get to where you have a comfortable retirement. And if you were to do that for 10 years, you could probably supply you for 20. And so you just have to begin to think about what could I do to bring my expense down so I could contribute to a retirement plan. Number two, the retirement plan you pick has to be a no loss plan. The only type of plans we do at Integrity are no loss plans. We, don't, we have never lost a client a dime of money because we only use no-loss planning strategies. And so if you're interested in doing that, then you first of all have to have some number you need to work with. And to work with that, you have to begin to understand, you know, if I need to bring my lunch to ensure my future, then I'm going to start bringing my lunch. If I've got to stop eating out to ensure my future, then I'm going to have to stop eating out maybe birthdays and Christmas and that kind of thing. But I've got to ensure my future. I've got to do something to take care of my future. And you've got to make sure to get that done. And so the way you want to do that is to first look at what are my expenses and can I bring them down so I can contribute toward my future. Number three, you've got to have a discipline and a discipline that allows you to see money but not have to spend money. You're going to have to have a discipline that allows money to pile up and when it piles up, you don't have these, these magical needs that have to be fulfilled because you now have money. You've got to have a discipline to be able to see money and not spend it. Now, if you have a problem, and it's okay, but if you have a problem that you can't see money without spending it, then put it in something that will ensure you can't do that. That, is, that it has such a penalty to do it that you won't do it. So you might need a good annuity. And a good annuity where you can put money in, a flexible uh, deferred annuity that you can put money in, but you can't get it back out. And you need to go ahead and use that kind of a plan because the penalty to take it out would be like 20 percent uh, surrender values. And it's got to be in for at least 15 years and you got 15 years to retire anyway. I'm talking about things like that. They'll pay you a bonus and all that, but they will hold on to the money and allow you to have a plan that will get it done. Now, when you use annuities, that brings me to number four or five. When you use an annuity, there are several plans. When you use an annuity, they can tell you in each statement what your income would be. So if you did a 20-year, for example, period certain, where you say, I'm going to do an annuity, I need to have a certain income for 20 years. They will tell you on your statement each month what your income would be if it started today. And so as you're building it up, you can build it to the income you want. You know how fast you need to run. You know how much you need to contribute. And you know what you have to do in the accumulation stage. And if you get that done, then when it comes time to distribute, you know what your income is going to be. And you, and you can put riders in there for inflation and all kinds of things. And if you do the first strategy I told you, the money will be tax-free. And if it's tax-free, you don't need as much of it. If your money is taxable, you got to get a whole lot of it because a third of it's going to go away in taxes. And so it's important for you to begin to think about what strategy am I going to use to get that done. 
Now, the other part of it is for all you young people listening to me, it's you're not in the pain that some of the older people are. Some of you older people listening to me, you got to start at $1,000 a month. I mean, it's, you're just there. You're $1,000, $1,200 a month. And for some of you, that you may sound like, oh, my God, this is hopeless. And it's not hopeless, but it, it does take some determination. Now, but for you younger people, you could, if you're 25 years old, I mean, if you're 25, 30 years old and that kind of thing, you're talking about $100, $150, $200 a month and in a consistent manner over a period of time, and you'll be good. You, you wouldn't have to, nothing to worry about at all. But for you older people, you've got to get after it. Now, there's some IRAs out there you all can use. Now, for the Roth IRA people, you, you need to get your $5,500 contribution in uh, if you're using your Roth. For those of you all who are using a SEP, it's $50,512. And you need to get your $50,000 in if you're able to get that done to fund yours and keep it funded and so forth. However, for business owners, listen to me. And you've got a tax burden ahead of you, and, and you're getting hit October 15th, right around the corner, and you've got a tax burden, and you've extended from last year, but you want to be better off this year, guess what you can do? You can do a plan called a non-qualified executive bonus plan, and you can put up to $300,000 into retirement this year for yourself and actually offset the taxes and give the company a write-off which would be extremely powerful because if you just did that for 10 years, you got a $3 million retirement, and you're probably in your 50s. And so want to think about these different strategies available to you, and you have to get with somebody who knows how to implement it because there's a legal part to do, a financial part to do, an insurance part to do, and all kinds of things to get it done. But if you get moving on it, you can get it done, and you begin to drop your, your tax liability almost 70%, and some of you will drop it completely. And instead of going out each year expensing up and buying trucks you don't need and putting inventory in warehouses you don't need and all of that stuff because your CPA only answer is, well, you're doing well, so you got to expense out. And then you go out and buy a bunch of depreciating assets. And remember what I told you before. You don't use your money on anything that goes down in value. If it goes down in value, you borrow somebody else's money and buy it. Or you use somebody else's money to do it. Your money needs to be spent on things that appreciate in value. That's how you get wealthy. That's how you retire well. But you don't spend your money on things that go down in value. That's why I don't spend my money on cars. And I don't spend my money on anything else that depreciates in value. That's going to be borrowed money, dealership money, credit union money, some kind of money. But it won't be my money. My money goes and buys houses and buys investments and put my money into different things that make money. Because that's how you get, become wealthy. You put your money in stuff that make money. It's real simple. But you don't have just random money sitting around doing nothing. And so if you plan to be wealthy, you're going to have to think about and you plan to retire well, what is your money in? Now, for, for many of you all, you thought real estate. And, and yes, real estate is a pretty safe bet most of the time. But when we had a crash like we had in real estate, there were some of you all that lost eight properties, nine properties, ten properties because the markets crashed. And your renters could no longer afford to be in your place and nobody was going to pay you $1,000. And Section 8 was only going to pay you a certain amount of money. And you found out it got tight even being in the real estate market. However, if you buy it correctly, then this won't be a problem because if, even if the income goes away, you have equity. You still have borrowing power and you can then leverage that to make money in what is making money at this particular point in time. For some of you all who are seniors, I know what you're saying that you had a retirement plan set up, but you had to use your equity because you did a reverse mortgage or something because you still didn't have enough income. I get it. I understand it. But what you got to think about now is can you use any part of that income to do anything to enhance your future? And if you can, then it's time to start thinking about doing that. Now, for some of you all, it might be a good idea to drag your equity out of that house, but don't go into reverse mortgage. Take that equity and put it into some kind of annuity and have that thing grow uh, tax deferred for you to get that tax free money back out. So I hope that helps you. Give us, a, give us a call if we can help you out. And I'm still looking to help somebody with your retirement plan. That number is 504-341-8255. And remember, I'm waiting to help you with it. I'll, I'll tell you step by step what you need to do on your retirement plan. Integrity Financial Business and Corporate Services, an independent and business consulting firm under the leadership of CEO Robert Tanner Jr. We specialize in advanced business planning, maximizing tax reduction, 
redirecting strategies, and much, much more. It's time to let the professionals at Integrity Financial Business and Corporate Services lead you in the right direction. Visit us online at integrityfbc.com. Email us at info at integrityfbc.com or call to make an appointment at 985-224-1136. Well, welcome back to our last segment. Um, I offered you a chance to, get, to have us talk to you about your retirement, and I know how it is. It's like the uh, the old classroom where uh, the class is going forth, teacher is teaching, and uh, nobody wants to ask that question. But once one of you do, then everybody else will, uh, and you might get the answer that someone else needs. Um, you can do that by calling our uh, line here. That's 504-341-8255. That's 504-341-8255. Listen. I know this is a scary topic for you, but here's the, here's the wonderful thing. I told you at the beginning of the show you have time because uh, you're going to live a long time. You, so you have time. But the world is not getting cheaper. It's going to get harder and harder to live uh, in it because things are going up, necessarily so. But you can plan, and that's the key. You can plan, and planning is the key. And you have to plan in things that don't dip drastically. You have to plan with things that are going to grow in one direction. That's, that direction is up. And we have several plans that do that, and that's what you're going to have to apply. You're going to have to get and pay for and, and pay for the future that includes long-term care. You're going to have to pay for those things you're going to need to make it happen for yourself. And you can do it. You can actually do it. Every one of you listening to me, you can get it done. Here's the key, though. You've got to move from inactivation to and procrastination and you've got to become active you've got to get involved you have got to begin to start it now how can you do it let me just give you some ideas some of you are going to get a nice tax refund this year that would be a great start to your new retirement plan if you did not fund it any other way but for tax refunds for let's say you're not you're not the richest person in the world but you're getting three and four and five and six thousand dollar tax returns it might be a great thing to say, I'm going to start something with my tax returns. Every year, I'm going to use taxes to make me wealthy. Every year, I'm going to use the overpayment of taxes to make me wealthy. Because that's all a tax return is, is the overpayment of taxes. And some of you go into jobs and you fill out one or zero so you can get a big tax return because you have no discipline to save money on your own. So you let the government do it for you. And then once a year, you get it all back and then you blow through it like a hot knife through butter. January 1 can't get here fast enough. But what I want you to do is think about what could happen if I took my entire tax return every year for the rest of my days and had it go into a retirement plan for myself. And every year I fund it with that tax return. Well, for some of you all, if you go back 10 years, you'd already have $60,000, $70,000 in your retirement plan, your separate retirement plan. If some of you went back 20 years, you'd have over $100,000 in your separate retirement plan. Forget what the boss has at work. Forget what Social Security is doing. This would be on your own, your separate plan. And so maybe you might want to think about, since you don't know any way you have money, some of you all who won lawsuits because you got, you got in one of those accidents, you, you wore the neck brace the time you had to wear it, whatever you did, and now you got money. Well, that would be a good seed to begin to start your retirement plan. And just having that sit there and grow for the next 20 years could get you into a real nice retirement plan. But there are several things like this that go on in your life that can help you to get to where you can actually pull off a retirement plan. But you have to begin to think about that and do it. Some of you all, you got some inheritance because someone died in your family prematurely. You got a house, you got whatever it is. Well, you liquidated that or you could liquidate that and that would be a good start for your retirement plan. Some of you all will left a stream of income like a lady called on last week. You will left a stream of income. That stream of income can begin to become a contribution for your retirement plan. And there are several things like that that can be used to build up for you a good retirement plan. Some of you have some stuff right now you could liquidate. You could begin to liquidate because, you know, you already are hoarding way more than you need to have. You could liquidate that and get yourself a good start on your retirement plan. But whether you're ready or not, you're going to wake up 65 years old. You're going to wake up when they have your retirement party and tell you it's been wonderful, but you got to leave here. And when you leave there, and you will have to leave there, go watch or not, you will leave. When you leave there and all your children and grandchildren are competing for the same jobs you want at Walmart, 
and the same jobs you want everybody everywhere else, they are not as big a liability as you are. And they won't cost what you cost. And what will happen is you will envy that man who's pushing that shopping cart at 70 years old at Walmart because you can't have his job. And that is why you have got to plan for this because if they keep cutting it and they will have to. They can't meet this. This is too big. 10,000 people a day coming into retirement since 2011. 10,000 a day. This is going to go on for 19 more years. You can only stretch dollars so far. We're already in a deficit of what? Uh, $712 trillion in deficit? I mean, what are we going to do? And the only thing you can do, in my opinion, is plan for yourself. Because the best person to look out for you is you. And so it's time to get planning done. So call our office. We can help you with this. That number is 504-799-2210. You can call us in the River Region area. That's 985-224-1129. And, of course, when we're on this show, you can call us at this number, 504-341-8255. Now, I understand when this show is going on, a lot of texting is going on and so forth, but you're texting someone that can't answer your question. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is give us a phone call, and we'd be glad to help you in a personal way to get this done. If you'd like to get a free consultation with our office um, to help you, I want you to call those numbers I gave you earlier, and we'll be glad to set you up for your first hour free consultation to at least get you started in the right direction. And again, that number is 504-799-2210 and 985-224-1129. And let me just say this to you as well. You may know someone who has retirements, and I'm going to give you another place that you might want to consider. If you have an old job you used to work, you now that's been two jobs ago, but you left a retirement plan over there. You left a 401k over there. You left a pension plan over there. There's this thing called rollover. You can set up an IRA and then have those monies that are sitting on those old jobs rolled over into a current IRA for you. And that gives you an ability to not just have the money, but to be able to contribute more and get that money growing again. Because your new place may not offer you that kind of thing. And so think about that. Is there a possibility that I have a job I left that while I was there, they were taking out for retirement? While I was there, they were putting in a pension. Was I vested or not? And if you were vested, then even though you're still working every day, there's still vested money sitting over at some company that is your money. And you need to get that move. Now, if you haven't done it for a while, you need to check the state website and go to unclaimed funds because when they can't pay it to you or can't find you or don't know where you are, it goes to the fund, the general fund of the state, as unclaimed money. And if that, in fact, ends up happening, then you can call the state and see about getting that done. And so these are all kinds of areas for you to begin to gather money to begin your retirement plan. Because I got to tell you, I don't know how many things are more important than you being able to get that done. And you need to be able to get that done. So, again, well, we want to just let you know that we are enjoying this time with you. I want to let you know that you can contact us. We're open every day. Um, except the weekends, and we're from 9 to 5 at our offices, and we'd be glad to have an appointment and take time with you to make sure we get your plan on track. Until we talk again, you've enjoyed Business Builders with Robert Tanner.